great actor, a great man of cinema. Please welcome Mr. Andy Garcia. Lyle and I used to go to the theater a lot as a young boy. And in the summers they'd have matinees where they would show two, two movies back to back. Mm -hmm. And you could see, you know, two James Bond movies or, you know, the movies of uh, the great heroes of the time. And somehow that uh, I had a very personal relationship to them. I'm, I'm sure many people in the cinema have that kind of relationship. They have their own relationship to, to movies. But I, I found it, to me, it was a very special time. Uh, you know, you, as an actor, you're learning constantly. You're getting better all the time, especially if you're studying, you know. Uh, I certainly felt I was ready. Maybe other people felt I wasn't. I don't know. You know, I, I, I know I'm a much better actor I am today than I was 25 years ago. The, uh, uh, the you know, sort of looking at your body of work, and I want to open this to become a conversation with the audience in a moment. Um, the, uh, but just It'd looking be funny if none, none of these people speak English, huh? <laughs> They're all going like this. The, uh, <laughs> uh, There's people in Cuba making movies. The relationship as it stands with the United States right now is strictly a, a uh, they've opened embassies and they've opened the travel restrictions. The, the embargo has not been lifted. So you couldn't, as an American production, you couldn't, you'd have to figure out a way of how to get in there. I'm not sure of the details. The main problem that exists in Cuba is that whether you're a movie company or uh, you want to open up a hotel or you want to open up a chocolate factory, you're always in partnership with the Castros. Well, you know, it was interesting because the, the Moldiriani, there was, there's not a lot written about him. You think there'd be more autobiographical things written about him, but there's only one, really one source. And, there's, and then there's all his work. So you take that one source, and, and, the imp and things that people said about him, fellow artists, and you begin to draw certain conclusions about who he was, and like any character, and then you let your imagination go. And then, of course, you have the interpretation of the character as he inter is interpreted by, in this case, the writer-director, McDavis, what kind of movie he wants to make. And uh, he it was, had a particular style, that movie, and, and you begin to release yourself, find the Modigliani in you. Uh, well, I still have a, a, a romantic idealism of making movies and I still have many dreams. I've been blessed to fulfill my, the dreams I had as a young man to, to do what I'm doing, but I, I'm still dreaming. I still have things I want to do. And that's what drives me. I have things, I, I, stories I want to tell. I, I have parts that I would like to play. And some of them, I don't even know what they are yet. But I have a, a, a tremendous appetite for still to act. And I, and I feel I'm a better actor today than I was at any moment in my life. So I'm eager to continue to do that and, and to continue to grow as an, as an actor. Uh, and as a filmmaker, for that matter. Uh, and I love collaborating and making movies. Uh, I hope that what sustains me is my work, my work ethic and the work that I deliver and that I'm, that I'm someone that a director can use in a positive way in a film that I can contribute to make it, you know, uh, uh, you know the better the parts, the better the whole kind of thing. And I, I feel that I'm a, I'm a good tool to a director.